What's up everyone, Seth Miranda here. This is Adorama Rewind, and it's gonna be a short, concise one this week. Uh, I wanna bring up stuff that's important and pertinent I think you guys should know about, rather than some rumory stuff. And again, it's like the holiday time, not a lot of things have been moving and shifting around, and we're two weeks away from the end of the year, so we'll do some wrap-up stuff for the year uh, in the next coming weeks or so. But let's get into this one. It's uh, pretty interesting. We are talking about the Facebook and Instagram likes thing, where Instagram is hiding likes and Facebook owns Instagram. Uh, the like number they've been saying have been to like help mental health well some Facebook employees have come out uh, they're not actually coming out they're anonymously saying whatever I don't know the Facebook police are gonna come down on them uh, basically saying that there's a little bit of a ploy to it shocking right so Facebook has a theory that hiding likes will increase post volume and Instagram is testing that theory so the key points are pretty much saying that while they were saying it would kind of take down in, uh, cyber bullying and it would help people not feel uh, like there's a stigma to likes and that they don't feel so self-conscious about the numbers. And they're really saying, they really wanted people to post more. And the more people post, the more time they're interacting with the platform, the more time they're interacting with the platform, the more ad revenue they can acquire, which is shocking, right? Crazy idea. Uh, in my opinion, if I had to throw it out there, I think it's all across the board. Everything has its place reason-wise, but of course, a company this large isn't gonna do something without its own interest in mind. So if there's a little bit of a splash side effect for it, then so, so be it. So far, everyone I've talked to has pretty much been happy with the hiding likes thing. Uh, it hasn't even affected my account yet. It hasn't rolled out over me, so I'm still seeing uh, likes. They still exist, so the metrics are still there for influencers. It's really just for face value civilians to be like, I'm just gonna have fun with this platform. And if that's the case and more people engage with it, then they're gonna spend more time and then ad revenue will be like, oh, instead of people spending two minutes per day, they're spending 20 minutes per day. And that means that, well, uh, it's worth investing into. Uh, I don't know, let me know down below. I know there's a ton of opinions on this and all types of polarizing and point of view. So let me know down below what you think about that. Um, in some Backwards compatibility news, I guess you'd say. Maybe not so much. Nikon F6. Apparently, you can still buy it brand new. A uh, photographer who's been a longtime film photographer, obviously, uh, wanted to get an F6. And people have been speculating that they have just been selling off old stock. Uh, apparently, he bought one and has proof of how it was manufactured recently and not something that's been sitting on a shelf, including when the date and time was set, the, the power of the internal battery, the serial number being only, uh, I think, under 2,000 away from the last one that was reportedly sold. So uh, that's kind of crazy. Check out the article down below if you're a Nikon fan. Um, I think that's pretty cool. And if you're a Nikon fan, you're gonna appreciate this little bit of nostalgia. For the 60th birthday of the Nikon F, they have released this swanky little watch. So that's pretty cool. The Nikon Museum makes this available. Uh, it's clearly the dial on top is in the middle and it's just a nice clean looking watch. Nothing crazy, but just something. I think the F is on the back, is it? Let's see, yep, the Nikon F is on the back. Uh, a legacy camera, legendary and well sought after. And this is probably gonna be a collector's piece for anybody that's a photo nerd. Uh, I think it'd be pretty cool to just ha say that I have one of these, but then again, I uh, would rather spend money on the gear I want to get. Uh, I, as you can see, there's nothing uh, on me jewelry wise, but that is kind of cool. And it's really awesome that we can see these companies have these legacies, right? The hundredth anniversary of Nikon was last year, I think. And now it's celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Nikon F and who knows where it's going to go from here. You know, other companies are reaching centuries uh, status like Olympus that we were talking about. Very, very cool that we've come this far and everyone's worried about where we're going and what the industry is becoming, but no one's really thinking back to how far we've come. So I think it's important to just take a breath, look at the past so we know where we're going and also just be psyched that we've all been a part of it in one way or another. But in some sadder Nikon news, I know it's like Nikon in a row, but they've been in the news a bit. Uh, Nikon's getting rid of their authorized repair program. So you can see here on iFixit, they basically are saying that when it comes to March 31st, 2020, the agreements run out for anyone that is an authorized repair uh, spot for Nikon. So if, they're, if it's April, May or the end of the year and they still are fixing Nikon saying they're authorized, they are not. The reason for this, Nikon's saying the cameras are getting too complex and they can't guarantee the quality of repair 
up to their standards. Uh, I kind of get that. I, uh, I'm sure there's other reasons. I'm sure there's back end reasons. I'm sure there's financial stuff, all sorts of things going on here. But it kind of sucks for Nikon users that uh, the only way to get your camera repair now is to just go right to Nikon, which is kind of where you should go in the first place. But I myself had a USB port get torn apart inside a, uh, what was it, a D700, D800, uh, when someone tripped over my tether cable on set and that cost me a whole new board inside the camera. So I totally know the pains of getting cameras repaired. And if I was gonna get something serious repaired on my camera, I would probably take it right to the manufacturer anyway, which is right here in Melville, Long Island and another spot in LA. So that's, just be aware that come March, 2020, that's it for authorized repair spots. Uh, and some really cool news, Kodak Ektachrome E100 is hitting 120 and four by five. It's kind of crazy that we're talking about this as being a release when film was wide everywhere on every platform years ago, but you can totally order it now. So uh, 120 medium format and 10 sheet box of four by five, which is pretty awesome. I think it's awesome that there's more choices for four by five out there. It's been getting pretty slim out there. Uh, I know Daniel Norton is gonna be psyched about this. I might just pick up some and load into my Cambo and see what happens. I don't know, it's been a while. I would like to get back into some large format. Maybe that's what I'll do in 2020 is slow things down and do the two sheet holders. Or maybe I'll even get into some tin types. I don't know, things are getting crazy. Vanessa Joy has been infecting my brain with getting into tin types because she's all psyched on it and I, and I get it. You know, I get it. Sometimes you just gotta like dial it back to your roots a little bit. Uh, this one's interesting. Antelope Canyon is shutting down its photo tours due to overcrowding and negative reviews. So pretty much when you go to this place, which got super, super popular from uh, Instagram and social media, you can see all this like haze. What's basically happening there is if you book a photo tour, the actual guides will block off this crazy amount of crowd so you have a few minutes to shoot and they'll actually throw the sand and the ash and weird things in the air so you can get the same shot as everyone else has gotten. But apparently they're getting bad reviews from people saying it's nerve wracking. You have a ton of people trying to get in there. They're blocking them off. You only have a few minutes to get the shot. What's enjoyable about this and they're paying money for it. Uh, on top of that, they are saying that the traffic is actually ruining the environment. Surprise, surprise. Uh, we've seen this before with Instagram happy spots that they've just been wrecking the ecosystem or leaving trash or stamping around and stuff like that. A tripod's ripping apart the earth, whatever they're saying. But either way, uh, this is kind of interesting. I'm wondering if uh, this is something that we're gonna see more and more often. Like, are they finally gonna be like, all right, it's not worth the money. Uh, we're looking bad now. People are getting turned off to even coming here. Let's just call it uh, as far as tours go. But if tours go away, then there's zero regulation. There's zero people there looking out for the space while people are there. Maybe it's more they need to reform how the guides act and placate to the people who take the tour. Like maybe you don't uh, throw sand and ash into the air and you just actually are a tour guide. I don't know, call me crazy. Uh, this is pretty cool. Twitter is saying they will no longer ruin your JPEGs. So Twitter's compression has been pretty ruthless, but they're saying that you can actually get up to a 16 megapixel, where is it? Even up to 16 megapixels can be preserved in square aspect ratio, but basically eight megapixels can be preserved, but the thumbnail will still be compressed. So if you're someone that uses Twitter a lot and you upload images a lot and you've been like looking back at them and they look like garbage, like usually how Facebook destroys your images, mm, you notice that, uh, you lose detail, gradation, color gets shifted, uh, shadow detail, all sorts of stuff happens. They're saying they can, they're gonna stop compressing them to death, except for the thumbnail. Let me know down below if you use Twitter to share photos, by the way. A lot of people around here are giving me like completely opposite uh, perspectives on like Twitter's dead. No, Twitter's the best. It's so easy to share. Like tell me down below if you're a Twitter person that drops your images in there. I myself just have it plugged into my Instagram. So when I post on Instagram, it goes to my Twitter, but also I've dialed back my Instagram. I'm posting like once or twice a month now. It's kind of crazy. Uh, and Canon users, beware the new RF 70 to 200 millimeter F 2.8, which is the new, brand new from the ground up rebuilt legacy glass that everybody has known. It's like half the size of the original 70 to 200 for the R mount, obviously. Uh, so they're saying it's having a problem with the minimum focusing distance where uh, the absolute minimum distance between the lens and the subject is uh, compromising where it can actually hit focus. And they're saying it's actually hitting in front of where the focus point is going. Uh, 
is that nitpicking? Not really, not when you're paying this much money for a lens that's supposed to be like a trifecta lens. Canon is actually saying here that they're recognizing it. They're not giving out statements or anything, but they're saying, hey, we heard you. A few people are reporting it. It's been on some forums. So if you're someone that has this lens, maybe you want to do a quick test, see if you're one of the lens affected. I'm sure there's a fix coming out for it. We'll let you know as soon as we know. And uh, you know, it, it, stuff like this happens. They put stuff out and there's a million different variations. They might have put it through its paces, but then something happened on the first run of the manufacturing of it. You know, stuff like this happens. Don't get freaked out, uh, but check out the link below if you do own this lens. Read it thoroughly, click all the extra links in there. Uh, I'll try to keep you guys up to date. All right, I'm gonna do something I've never done here on Adorama Rewind, and I'm going to start the very first shout out of the week. And this is gonna go to people that I think are engaging back with Adorama TV that deserve a spotlight on their work, are doing some pretty cool work that uh, you know could use a little bit more momentum to it and that are just positive to the Adorama community. I see them, I see all the comments, I see the people that are talking, replying to other people, helping other people, giving insight, not these trolly comments. And I'm seeing it get angrier and angrier out there on YouTube. Uh, the comments are just getting nuts. Uh, so I actually started a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash lastxwitness, which is something I'm trying to build as a community so people can share their images, we can talk about them, share experiences, find out about gear. I just found out of a lens I didn't know existed a while back that people clued me into. It's been really awesome, so feel free to come join uh, me on Twitch, lastxwitness on Twitch. I'd be happy to have you. But back to the shout of the week. Uh, I am going to highlight people that I think really could use it. And this person, you probably heard me say a few times on the channel because they've commented that much and that insightfully that I had to respond. This is going out to Robbie Keen. Robbie.Keen on Instagram with these amazing bird portraits. Uh, that's what I call them anyway. Uh, he's been telling me that he doesn't feel like he's getting a lot of momentum out there with his work. So I wanted to give him a quick shout out. Uh, some really great stuff, very, very clean, right out of camera. Some really interesting stuff. Uh, it's stuff that I think is worth looking at, especially for people out there that like landscape, wildlife, and stuff like that. This is a great Instagram for you guys to check out. Really, really clean, very nice work, and he's been super positive to everybody else on Adorama TV. So I'm gonna put his link down below. You guys can check that out. So every week, I think instead of highlighting the comments that are trolly, where I was gonna go face to face like I did a few times this year, um, I think it's important that I highlight and reward those people that aren't that and are trying to actually be a positive outlook for people right here on Adorama TV. And we're approaching a million subscribers, which means you're part of that. If you hit subscribe, you're one in a million and we built a community together. We can't do what we do here without you guys. So all the demos, all the videos, all the instruction, all the first look and uh, new product stuff, all the insight that you feel like we've given you, Gavin Hoey, Mark Wallace, Vanessa Joy, Daniel Norton, Bergman, David Bergman, I shouldn't say Bergman. <laughs> Uh, whoever else we have on the channel, we try very, very hard to bring you some of the best talent and education that we can, and we appreciate you guys sticking around for the long run with us. So uh, I'm gonna reward you guys. Every week, I'm doing a shout out of the week to somebody that uh, I see out there commenting all the time. All right, uh, I'm gonna leave it there. No question of the week. I just want you to go check out this Instagram. How's that? All right, guys, uh, let me know about everything we talked about. Let me know about what you think about the Facebook uh, saying that they think more people will engage with the platform longer from hiding likes. Let me know what you think about Nikon cutting out the authorized uh, repair program. Uh, let me know if you're someone that's psyched about the Ektachrome 100. I know I am. That's awesome. And the more we see more film stocks come out, we might actually see film cameras be produced again. Wouldn't that be crazy? Who knows? We might even see uh, refurbs, right? We might actually see camera companies putting out the actual cameras from those years just rebuilt. We don't know. Let me know down below what you think about that. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, you can follow me at most social media, Last X Witness. I would be happy to engage back with you. Uh, and don't forget to hit like, share this video around, hit subscribe, and the bell. You need the bell to let you know when stuff has come out on this channel. I'll see you guys next week. Be good to each other. Peace.